All right. Open source education, right? Yeah. Here we go. Welcome. Thank you. All right. This is going to be much less exciting, but uh, well, we'll see how it goes. Um, so, like Jason said, I'm going to talk about um, open source and uh, education. I was at the Red Hat Summit about a year ago, much closer to the waterfront, but I said education is broken. Well, I'm still a college student, and um, well, I've learned a lot in the past year, so I want to talk about that for a little while. This is a book that I feel like I should have brought along, but I didn't. It's called A New Culture of Learning, uh, written by John Seely Brown. It actually talks a lot about uh, the principles that I've come to hold true. So I'm going to read you a couple of quotes from that book, which is sort of uh, my way of lecturing you. The kind of learning that will define the 21st century is not taking place in the classroom, at least not in today's classroom. Rather, it is happening all around us, everywhere, and it is powerful. We call this phenomenon the new culture of learning, and it is grounded in a very simple question. What happens to learning when we move from the stable infrastructure of the 20th century to the fluid infrastructure of the 21st century, where technology is constantly creating and re uh, responding to change? Well, sounds like a valid question. But I want to take a step back and talk about culture, because you know, a new culture of learning, what does that even mean? We sometimes say that people come into open source communities and they get a culture shock. So, um, and as an example, uh, I would like to talk about my school, Olin College, where we also say people don't get what we do at the school until they come and see what's going on. So we ran a study and talked to faculty, administrators, students, to figure out what it actually is that makes our school special. And we, we came up with a couple of things, but we found that there was actually no common language for all these values, behaviors, and attitudes that people in the community were exhibiting. Some of them were risk-taking, openness to change, things like that. Now, what does that remind me of exactly? Open source communities. And there's even an academic term for that that's called communities of practice. Um, the researcher who's looking into that is called Etienne Wenger, and uh, one of the definitions of communities of practice um, go, through being absorbed, uh, absorbed in the community of practice, apprentices learn who is involved, what they do, what everyday life is like, how masters talk, walk, work, and generally conduct their lives. Well, so there's this culture that we can get people involved in, but we still don't know how. And so there is somebody who conducted another study um, on how kids interact with new media these days. And she came up with three major things, namely hanging out, messing around, and geeking out. So I want to talk about these for a little bit. Namely, hanging out, which many of us know if you are actually involved in an open source project, um, you, you, know, you subscribe to the mailing list, you lurk in the IRC channel, you sort of see what's going on, you, I don't know, maybe you put one toe into the water, but that's about where you stay. Um, then there's messing around which, you know, maybe you download the code, you try to compile it, you, you know, you, you put your feet in the water, but you're not actually getting deeply involved. Maybe it will throw an error and you don't know what to do. And then there is uh, geeking out, which is, I guess, what I'm doing here right now. So you go around, you go to conferences, you evangelize, you're excited, you're passionate about um, the project or whatever it is you're doing. And that's sort of the level that we want to get at. Um, and I think people are, passionate about a lot of things, but since there's this, this new culture of learning, we are moving um, these things from maybe the classroom or the workspace to hobbies. They're, they, they're happen, happening everywhere because the communities of practice are everywhere and we can interact everywhere with people. So they can experiment, they can play, they can question things. And it's not so much about finding the answer in the back of the book, uh, which is what we did in the early days, but we're trying to get away from that. So. I've talked a lot about culture now, but there's more to it, namely knowledge, habitat, attitude, resources, and imagination. Uh, Tina Selig is a person who's working at the D School at Stanford, and she characterized innovation as being composed of these six components. So if you want to foster innovation, people jumping into water, um, in your company or in your community, you need to think about all these pieces and try to create a coherent image that enables people to be intrinsically motivated and self-determined and help them to work on the things they actually care about. Thank you. 